Today we're going to review a microeconomic market structure known as perfect competition. Let's start by reviewing the parameters of what makes a market perfectly competitive. The first, and perhaps most important, is that there are many firms in the market. Uh, so that would mean that there are hundreds or perhaps even thousands of individual businesses that collectively make up the industry or the market. The second characteristic is that all the firms in the industry sell what's known as a standardized product. That is to say that there's no product differentiation. Consumers don't really care who they buy the product from because essentially an apple is an apple. Um, and the third characteristic of perfectly competitive markets is ease of entry or exit into the market. So for example, if somebody wanted to start up a business in this particular market, there's no significant barriers uh, to prevent that person from starting up that business in this particular industry. Now, in terms of understanding profit maximization in the perfectly competitive industry, we need to start over here at the picture which will show us the curves for the industry. So the industry, like any other, has a positively sloped supply curve. It also has a negatively sloped demand curve. Now, where demand meets supply, the market is said to be at equilibrium. At this point, the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied, so there is neither a surplus nor is there a shortage, as would prevail if we were at some point other than the equilibrium point. Now the equilibrium point gives us the total market quantity that will be produced by all of the firms in the marketplace. The market supply and demand curve also provide us with the equilibrium product price. And so this is the price at which all of the firms that make up the industry must sell their product if they are to remain competitive. So that is why in perfect competition, the perfectly competitive firms are what is known as a price taker. That is, they cannot essentially charge a price that seems fit to them. They must charge the equilibrium market price or else risk being priced out of the market. So what happens is we move from our industry curves to our firm curves. We are going to take this price and send it over here. So if this is pr price level one taken from the industry curves, we are going to take it and place it right over here uh, for the firm. Now, interestingly, in the perfectly competitive market, the individual firms face what's known as a perfectly elastic demand curve which is at the equilibrium price. Of course, the industry demand curve has the negative slope for reasons like the income effect, the substitution effect, and diminishing marginal utility. But that doesn't follow over to the firm, because the firm is, in fact, a price taker. It must charge this price across all quantities demanded. And so that's the reason for the horizontal shape of the demand curve that the individual firm faces. Now. Because the price level will be the same across all quantities of output that this firm contributes to the total market quantity, the marginal revenue that the firm will uh, receive from the sale of an additional unit of this particular product will always be equal to the product price. So for example, if the product price is $5, well, if the firm sells one product at $5, it's going to receive $5 of revenue. If it sells two units of that product, it will receive a total of two units times the product price of five, which is $10 of total revenue. The extra revenue from the sale of the second unit is $5. That extra revenue is the marginal revenue. The marginal revenue is defined as the change in total revenue over the change in the quantity. So in this case, you sell one additional unit, what has been the increase in total revenue? That will give you the so-called marginal revenue. Now, the firm faces a cost curve that we describe as the marginal cost curve. The marginal cost curve, like the marginal revenue curve, plots the various additional costs in dollars that the firm will incur based on increasing its production. So we see that the marginal cost curve has three different phases to it. First, it has the phase where marginal costs will actually decrease as the firm increases its production. 
That's because of something known as increasing marginal returns. As the firm decides to produce more of a particular good uh, for a short period of time, it actually becomes more efficient. And so on a per unit basis, the costs are going to decline. Eventually, that marginal cost is going to bottom out and further production, say up to seven or eight units of that particular good to produce more the firm is going to be adding additional costs on the margin uh, to its total costs. So that means that there has been diminishing returns from production. In other words, each additional input that is employed is less productive in terms of the amount of output that it's responsible for than the previous unit of input. So that's why we see this sort of U-shaped character of the marginal cost curve. Now another curve that becomes relevant is something known as the um, average total cost curve. The average total cost curve is going to have a similar U-shape to the marginal cost curve. And what we'll see is that the marginal cost curve will actually intersect the average total cost curve at its minimum point. We're going to find that that's a mathematical necessity because the margin is the change in the total and the total is what's driving the average. So for example, when the margin is below the average, it's going to pull down the average. When the margin intersects the average, they are exactly equal. And when the margin goes above the average, it's going to pull up that average. So we see that the shape of the average total cost curve is dictated by the shape of the marginal cost curve. So we're starting to develop our picture for equilibrium in the perfectly competitive market. Now. What is the equilibrium point or the so-called profit maximizing point? It's always the same. The profit maximizing rule is marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So where do we see the marginal revenue and marginal cost curves intersecting here? We see them at this point. That's where MC is equal to MR. So that dictates to the firm the profit maximizing level of output. Let's call it 10 units. If the firm wants to maximize its profit, it ought to produce 10 units of this particular good. Now, what is the firm going to charge? It's going to charge the, charge the $5, which is the industry produced equilibrium price for that product. The firm was the price taker. Now, it's important to understand that this picture right here represents a short run in a perfectly competitive market for a firm. Because we see that this firm is, in fact, earning an economic profit. If it is going to sell 10 units at $5 per unit, the question is, how much is it costing the firm to produce 10 units? Well, for that number, we need to go down to the average total cost curve. So to produce 10 units, the average total cost, let's say, is going to be $3. And so on a per unit basis, it's costing the firm $3 to produce.